Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. This is a counting nightmare. Welcome Tag, welcome Panicking, Amigo, King Broly, Counting Kittens. Welcome everyone. Did I catch everyone? I hope so. Oh, Yosha, welcome. I'm pretty tired today. I don't think I slept very well last night. We'll see how I go today. Sorry if I'm uh, a bit out of it. Oh well. We started case three yesterday. Recipe for turnabout. It's a case. <laughs> um, I'll try and go over what's happened so far. This doesn't feel like much has happened, actually. Might be a blessing in disguise you missed yesterday's stream. Yeah, this is one of my least favorite cases so far. It might get better today, I hope, but uh... Alright, uh, let's see. So it started off with us discovering we had an Im we had a doppelganger, a, an imposter, who pretended to be us in court. They defended a client and were, did a terrible job of it and had them found guilty. So we, we managed to get a retrial, so we're trying to... That, that was a month ago, so we're trying to get that case redone to get her found innocent. And it's Maggie Bird again. <laughs> Poor Maggie, always getting caught up in awful things. You passed out yesterday before you saw Armstrong? Ah, you uh, you passed out at a good time then. <laughs> yeah. So Maggie is a waitress now at a French restaurant, and she was found guilty of poisoning someone's coffee. We're trying to, of course, get her found innocent for that. This is a guy who was poisoned, he was a programmer. He wore a thing over his eye, he's basically a scouter. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z scouter. Uh, he... He, yeah, he's taking medication for his ear, because his eardrum was ruptured in some kind of accident the day before. Um, Gotto's the prosecutor again. And there's these characters. We both suck. <laughs> Alright, so this is the guy who owns the restaurant. He's a huge stereotype. And this guy's another stereotype. He, he's the dirty old man stereotype. This isn't a very good case. I don't like this case. <laughs> Right, we, had to, we had to deal with this guy in court, and uh, well, he he likes waitresses, and he claims he saw Maggie put the poison in, but he was too busy staring at her uniform, and uh, yeah. The the court section didn't even have a very good ending. He had like one last thing to say, and it turned out to be just been some rubbish about how he he broke the the uh, flower vase. Yeah, no. Okay, potassium cyanide, that's the poison. The victim had a prescription bag on their on their table, but it's empty. This is for their ear, ear medication. But yeah, the whole bag's empty, which is interesting. Uh, the apron Maggie was wearing is covered in... Uh, what are they? Coffee stains and ketchup stains, I think they said? Yeah. The victim had a winning lottery ticket for a million, or half a million dollars, so that's what everyone decided the motive for Maggie killing him was. Um, the coffee cup that was poisoned. The photo of the crime scene. He took one sip from his coffee cup and then killed over. Better or worse than the circus case? Um, I like it less so far, but the second half of cases are usually more exciting, so we'll see how we go. Hey, Kruger, how are you? To be sort of fair to Vic Kudo, he's ashamed of being a perv and never starts grouping them or being horny for Maya. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 true. Nothing wrong with uh, you know having a kink. Um, there's a layout of the floor plans. I don't know how much of this is important at the moment. Let's just start our investigation and see how we go. How does it take Phoenix a month to realise he lost in court? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gumshoe came along and told him that that's the only reason that uh, Nick even knows. All right, January seven, twelve fifty-two p.m. Wright and Co. Law Offices. So, how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is what old Mr. Kudo saw, the apron straps and the ribbon, and that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. 
Talk about a terrifying case of contradictionitis. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah. We've got to find one for Maggie, or she's going to have a terminal case of guilty. Bing, 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 bing. Well, I'm officially at a loss as to where to start. Yeah, me too. Let's try some brainstorming. You go first. I guess we should try to put Mr. Kudo's testimony to some sort of use. Yeah, that's true. And we need to figure out the identity of the waitress and who the victim really was. Somehow, I think the key to this case has got to be at Trabian. Well then, let's go back there and check it out again. Oh, and we should drop in on Maggie and see how she's doing too. That's a good idea. So, anything on your mind? Actually, there is something. Hmm? I was wondering about Zin Eop. You know, like, what's what he's like and stuff. Yeah, Zin Eop is what we've dubbed uh, Phoenix's evil doppelganger. Because it's Phoenix backwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that guy. I gotta beat you so hard, it'll feel like you use a smooch in the express train. Phoenix Wright. You saying you, Phoenix Wright? Because I'm Phoenix Wright. The one and only. Actually, I've learned a little something about my doppelganger. Huh? You did? What did you find out? Oh, yeah. Mine was working at the restaurant when I ran into Don Fanione. Don Fin. Wait, what? Don Fanione? Let's just say he was such a terrible version of me that I wanted to sue for defamation. What's that guy's story, anyway? What does he have to gain by impersonating me? Yeah, we run into that guy. He has a... he has a... pink scooter that's all smashed up. He blamed us for it. Yeah. Oh, this, this is the only thing we got out of the old man in the end. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> the rest of his testimony we just kind of shredded and tore apart. Hey Sneedin, how are ya? How did they mistake that guy for Nick? I honestly have no idea. I got no idea. Yeah, hey Maya, you got my badge. That badge is totally useless, Nick. Huh? I mean, no one suspected that Zin Eop wasn't a real lawyer. I bet he didn't even have an attorney's badge. I uh, guess you're right. Or maybe he did have one, and maybe he switched your real one for a fagazi. My badge? A fake? <laughs> That's a good one, Maya. Why the nervous laughter? <laughs> I knew it! Your badge really is fake, isn't it, Nick? <laughs> I like how he's just disturbed by that idea. Do you know anything about this, Maya? Hmm. Even someone as worldly wise as me doesn't know everything about everything, Nick. So I, the great Maya, am sad to say I can't tell you much about this object. A simple yes or no, Maya. It's not as if you had to give me a dissertation. Alright, let's talk about all the evidence. It's a good way to recap what's going on. This doodle here. It was drawn by the victim, right? This is a newspaper from the day of the incident, so yeah. We've got to assume so. There must be a clue in there somewhere. I guess we should show it around and see if anyone can tell us more about it. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the, have, have we get the Megatama back? Uh, it turns out Armstrong uh, is a clinical th uh, thief. Hang on, what's... Kleptomaniac, there we go. Yeah, he stole the Megatama and we found it in the kitchen. Yeah, he, he can't help stealing stuff. I can't believe there's a fake Nick running around. Yeah, I know. What's the deal with that? Why is he impersonating me? Maybe he's got something against you. People do tend to have a distinct distaste for you, Nick. True enough. The only thing prosecutors seem to like about me is pushing me around. Or maybe he's got something against Maggie. So he pretended to be me to get Maggie convicted? Hmm. I don't know. Nothing to say about that. And also, the food at Trabian is terrible. Right, nothing about that. Scooter. That thing must have been in an accident. It's a total wreck. 
That's what the guy I met at the park was riding, and I'm betting he's the fake me. Grrrr! Because I'm Phoenix Wright, the one and only. His voice is still ringing in my ears. Introduce me next time, Nick. I want to meet Zinni up too. A loan of half a million dollars? I wonder what Mr. Armstrong did to get into that much debt. I'm gonna guess he spent money needlessly. You'd better watch your spending too. Hey, I've got a great idea. What if Mr. Armstrong charged $20,000 for the twin tea set? If you hit people with that kind of bill, Maya, they will hit you back. Hmm. Note how fake Phoenix is wearing a tiger-themed suit. In Japanese and Chinese symbolism, tigers and dragons are traditionally enemies. Ah, oh, okay, yep. In the Japanese, Nick's named after the dragon. Ah, okay. Alright, that makes sense. Thanks, Counting. A letter of apology from the old man? Oh, how sweet. Actually, it's his testimony. If you can call it that. So, what's it say? I broke the vase at my seat, I'm sorry? <laughs> I used to break things all the time when I was little, you know. And I used to have to write apologies all the time too. Well, Pearls and Adrian seem to have picked up where you left off. <laughs> Nothing to say about that. Floor plans, nope. Prime photo, no. That's the cup the poison was in, isn't it? Yeah, and the stain on the rim shows that the victim used his right hand to pick it up. But the old man swore he saw the victim pick it up with his left hand. If Mr. Kudo wasn't mistaken, then what could account for this contradiction? Maybe I should try the lottery sometime too. Sure, why not? If you hit the jackpot, you could win half a million bucks. So, what are you waiting for, Nick? Buy one! No way! Don't you know the lottery is a tax on people who are bad at math? Blah, fine then. At least I can add it to the newly renamed Pass to Wealth. I'll have to call Pearly later and have her add buy lottery tickets whenever possible. It's almost surreal that this artsy apron is what got us this far. Well, as art goes, this piece definitely leaves an impression. I guess that means the old guy never saw the front of it, huh? Which means he didn't see the waitress's face, either. I can't believe they found this in Maggie's pocket. Yeah, but she was passed out, right? So the killer could have easily planted it on her. Where do you even get a hold of something like this? It's not like you can go down to your local Cosmo and buy it in bulk for five dollars a pound. She has got a point. How the killer got a hold of this poison is pretty important. The tiger guy is a huge dumb stereotype too, really. Ah, uh, Brooklyn stereotype. Ah, yep, yep. Hey, Scooby Kip, how are you? Yeah, I'm gonna show you all the profiles. New Ear Otolaryngeological Clinic. Hmm. Jolical. I don't know how to say that word. I guess if your eardrum was ruptured, you couldn't listen to the radio, huh? Yeah, it'd be pretty pointless to wear an earpiece of any kind. The medication in the bag is missing too, right? The mysterious vanishing medication. Much like a mysterious other person. Hmm. So, how's your spirit medium training going? Well, I'm kind of taking a break. I'm having a bit of trouble right now, you know? Last year's incident must still be on her mind. I haven't seen Maya train at all since then. I think Mia said that it's because Maya's kind of torn these days. Mia really bailed me out again yesterday. Ah! That seedy old man was so rude to me! He didn't realise just how awesome I am! If he had, I bet he would have treated me better. Since when did you become so awesome? <laughs> Gotto got it good today, huh? 
He was even smoking at the end there. He'll have a new witness ready for tomorrow, though. You can count on it. We need to figure out the facts before then, or we're doomed. A lot of strange conflicting things kept popping up today in the trial, huh? Yeah, and they seem to come out of nowhere. That's why we've got to go talk with Maggie and get this whole thing straightened out. Maggie said that when she brought the victim his coffee, there was one more person sitting at the table. This single contradiction is probably the most important one we have to resolve. Have you noticed the victims in our cases tend to be people we know nothing about, Nick? Take Glenelg, for example. Now that you mention it, we don't know what kind of guy he was or why he was killed. I say it's time to get out there and find some answers. Oh, you finished the game? Nice! Congrats, Scurvy! I really felt sorry for Gumshoe today. He really wanted to help Maggie out, but he kept getting back into a corner. Maggie took it pretty bad, didn't she? Do you think she feels betrayed? Maybe. We've got to cheer her up somehow. She's a friend, after all. A friend? Hmm. Never really thought of it that way, but I guess she is. It's the seedy old man. What's his name again? Vermin Kudo, is it? I can't remember either. I've never seen a witness mess up so badly in court before. Better stay away from him for a while, huh? Yeah, it might be more than C's that he chucks at me next time. The chef's a witness too, right? I suppose so. He was in the kitchen at the time of the incident. Well, since old Seedy's testimony is pretty much useless to us, I guess we should speak to Mr. Armstrong again, huh? I suppose we should. Let's have a look around first. Charlie! Decorative plant. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new here. Oh, right. where to go? Let's go talk to Maggie. Next time you stream it, you're going to try the difficulty mods and do hard modes. Ooh, that sounds fun. Detention center, visitor's room. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But, but we've got questions to ask her too. Maggie! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya. This isn't a playground, you know. <laughs> well, now let's go to the police station. See if Gumshoe's here. Police station, Criminal Affairs Department. Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in here somehow. You think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Call in the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet! But my email pen pal... Leet Asian Princess. <laughs> Save it for later, I'm turning it off now! No, Leet Asian Princess! Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy? More like panicking, if you ask me. Something's going on. Something big. <laughs> what? <laughs> this must be the chief of the detectives here. He looks lost now that the power to his computer has been cut. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to write her a real letter instead of an email. Alternately, you could write up some reports. Just a suggestion. Dear Elite Asian Princess, how are you? I'm okay. How was the show last night? Wow, what an awesome job! Maybe I should send in my resume and become chief. <laughs> They're very busy here, aren't they? A poster of a female police officer. Wait, no. That's the latest bathes in uniform calendar. My bad. I don't know if that ever changes dialogue. The badges! Hey, that's the police mascot, isn't it? It's so cute. That's the blue badger! Yeah, I think this is the same dialogue as yesterday. Got the pink badger. 
do, 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 do. yeah. Nothing dialogue, nothing too interesting there. These are the detective's desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tidier than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Even pickpockets can have their pockets picked. That's a keeper. Better to, better to go with something that doesn't sound too much like a slogan. He must be coming up with slogans for a crime prevention campaign. But I'm not sure even he knows what kind of crime he's trying to prevent. Hmm. I guess we'll have to come back later to see what the heck's going on here. Because these people are not helpful. Alright, I guess we go to... Oh, where's the restaurant? Okay, I have to get there from here for some reason. Alright, off to all the pink in the world. I'm going to drink some water. Tray begin. Empty, as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime too. That's it, come on, come on, come on. Hey, that sounds like... Now just call an eight, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ah, looks like an eight would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a rip off. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, we got a lottery ticket. Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio? Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having the twin tea set. <laughs> what can I say? What can you say? The foods are a bit expensive, Gumshoe, and it's not good. Why would you come here? This is a nightmare! How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow apart my testimony. Why, of all days, did you do it today? Yeah, so Gumshoe was the first witness in court. And, uh, well, he was just doing his job, because otherwise Godo would have called him out. But, uh... Yeah, Maggie wasn't very happy about his testimony. S sorry, there just weren't any holes in it, for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. S Swiss cheese? Would he have preferred crumbly like aged parmesan? Anyway, this, cha this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Something like that. Whoa. Oh. But please, Detective Gumshoe. I didn't mean... Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh man, poor Gumshoe. Oh. Mm. So, did you like the twin tea set? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess. I don't know how to describe it, really. It was... delicate? Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with him? It looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realised. It's bad. That's it. It tasted bad. Huh. It's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you paid 20 bucks for it, you know? Aww. You agree with me? This case is more silly than 2-3 so far. <laughs> yeah, there's so much pink here, isn't there? <laughs> so much pink. 
Maybe he should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glenelg came here. Maybe he heard about the super fierce twin tea set. If by fierce you mean fearsome. Speaking of Glenelg, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here. Bum, 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 bum. Gonna save. Bam, bam. Okay, so he leaves after I talk to him. So what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that. That was nothing. Oh, I wasn't excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe. You can tell little old me. What were you listening to? Uh, nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Oh. Gumshoe with a cyclock. What the? A cyclock? Mmm, <laughs> this lunch special's lobster sure is great. Then why are there tears in your eyes? Well. Anything here different from yesterday? Fashion magazines in French. Nothing new here. Magical boxes that spit out money. That still makes me chuckle. So this is the the uh, vase that Kudo claims broke, but well, we didn't. He broke his own instead. Table with a murder occurred. Police tank. Yeah, I don't think any of this is new. Oh my. Hey Nick, do you think old CD was talking about a vase like this today in court? It does look like it's ready to fall over any second. It looks kind of fragile too. I bet if Mr Armstrong charged $10,000 for every vase a customer broke, he'd be able to pay off his loan really quickly. If you hit people with that kind of bill, Maya, they will hit you back. Ah, okay, I thought we might get it added to evidence. Yeah. Alright, Gummy. Check out my badge. Is that thing real, pal? Why does everyone keep asking me that? I wonder what this phony of yours is like. He had Maggie found guilty of murder. Doesn't that tell you? It tells me the guy is cruising for a bruising. You're really caring, aren't you, Detective Gumshoe? About Maggie, I mean. Chief Irons. Uh, where was Chief Irons from? Oh, Resident Evil, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, what can I ask you about that I haven't asked you about yet? Let's talk about lunch. I haven't got anything to say about that, pal. Just take it away already, please. Spending $20 on this has got to be killing him inside. Oh, Yeah, RE2 remake. Bumping. Ah. Hey, I thought you said you were going to help us out. I can't help you out if I don't have any info. Yeah, I suppose the retrial has only just begun. There was a bottle he took that he was going to test, but we haven't heard anything about it yet. We don't have it in our inventory anymore. Hmm. I wasn't at the trial myself, but I asked this one detective I know how your defence was. Ah, we've seen this. Yeah. Seen that yesterday? Sports paper. That's the sports paper the victim wrote something in, right? What is it? I know I've heard that name somewhere before. MC Bomber. Yeah, I heard it real recently too. Wow, how she seems to be thinking for once. Ah, uh, it's no good. I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Scooter! 
Hey, are you putting this up for sale, pal? N no. Why? Would you want a busted up scooter like this anyway? Yeah. Plus, the seat's all covered in pigeon poop. Who cares? If it runs, that's all that matters to me. My fernie was riding this bike. Maybe if I head back to the park, it'll be there again. Dun, 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 dun. It's for half a million dollars, pal! That's, um, half a million dollar bills! What was the um in there for? Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without this case's file in front of me. But I'll tell you this. That Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. He was desperate, you know? No, I don't. But I think I sort of get the picture. I know I've seen, I know I've seen some of this dialogue before, but I can't remember what we have seen. What do you think about this, Detective Gumshoe? Sorry, pal. I can't discuss anything connected to the case. Hey, I thought you said you were going to help us out. I can't help you out if I don't have any info. Yeah, I suppose the retrial has only just begun. Try showing him everything. Every game needs more Big the Cat. <laughs> Lottery ticket. A one-way ticket to happiness, huh? Glenel died because of this ticket. Yeah, but it's still a one-way ticket to happiness, pal. And Maggie was found guilty of murder because of it, too. Aww. Looks like anything about Maggie is an instant conversation stopper. Yeah, he's got a real soft spot for her. And it obviously hurts when you hit it. That's the apron Maggie was wearing. Yeah, it still smells like her too. Ugh. Does this mean Maggie smells like ketchup? <laughs> Nothing to say about the poison. We never did find the contents of that bag. It was medicine for Mr. Elf's ruptured eardrum, right? Yeah, we found traces of it in his left ear canal. He must have used it while he was at Trebian. We're sure of that much. Mm. You know what that chef said to me? Oh la la, your body is full of latoxins. Ah, oh, you've seen this dialogue. Oh, it actually worked. Hang on, he, he actually tried it. But I'll tell you what, this stuff works like a charm. I slept like a rock last night. Uh, oh, really? That's nice. <laughs> hmm. Well, it helped. Yeah, maybe we don't want to know the answer to that, King Roy. <laughs> you know, in all my years, I've never seen a witness who was that confused before. Yeah, you looked pretty confused by his testimony. Nothing against old guys. I like them and all. But he sounded like he was pretty sure about what he saw. Yeah, that's the impression I got, too. Me three. But then, why doesn't even a single part of his testimony corroborate any of the facts? Hmm. I know I look a little rough around the edges, but the truth is, I'm a lot more detective-like than I used to be. Really? Like what part? Like the colour of my coat. Ah, you're right. Yeah, but what about what's inside the coat? I don't know if there's anything else. Maybe Gotto? Mr. Gotto agreed to take this case just so we could face you, pal. Ah, yep. Seeing this dialogue. Why didn't Gotto take this case when Maggie's first trial came up? Yeah, that is kind of odd. I mean, everyone thought the defence was Phoenix Wright. So why didn't he try to fight me then? Well, according to Mr. Gotto, he knew the guy was a phony right away, so he didn't want to bother with the trial. Couldn't be bothered to tell the judge. Wow. <laughs> he really does hate Phoenix. Maggie's probably crying all alone right now, huh? Yeah, thanks to you. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Maya, don't torch poor Gumshoe's feelings like they're cups of cheap creme brulee. You're really crazy about Maggie, aren't you? No, 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 I'm just, I, I'm not, it's not that I, 
You don't have to hide it, Gamshu. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, you're way too plain looking for Maggie, right? I'd arrest you right now if you weren't so right. Aww. Hmm. You're looking upbeat as usual. And you're looking tired as usual, Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, that's life, huh? One guy's got it all, and one guy's got squat. Is it just me, or did the room get darker all of a sudden? You know, Detective, this is the year of the... um... gum! It... it is? Yeah, I think. Gum, huh? This is going to be a great year for this old gumshoe then, right? Look at that, he perked up in no time. Maya, don't mess with him like that. Aww. That's kind of sweet though, she made him happier. Alright, let's try and break this lock. We'll see what we need to break this lock anyway. Plain looking people unite, gumshoe. <laughs> Take that! He immediately gets sad. <laughs> the radio. Alright, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm not going to tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to my badge. Well, Detective Gumshoe, yeah, that's it, pal. You got me. You sure are something. Then how come I'm still seeing the lock? Guess I was wrong. <laughs> that's cute. He tries to trick us. Now, what was it he was shouting when he was listening to the radio? That's it. Come on, come on, come on. Now just call an eight, pal. Come on. I know you can. No, that's the wrong number. Seems so obvious. I better ask him again. But don't tell me you're not through yet. There's a ticket. Ticket! I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glenelg did. It's... It's like you can see right through me! Huh? I've cracked him already? See, pal. That's why I said it was nothing. Huh. Easiest cyclock ever? <laughs> I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how did it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. Yeah, I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket as Mr. Elk, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Elg was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah, what time is it now? Uh, it's... it's just after 1.30. And are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah. Look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. Ha. Huh. Millionaire Radio Flyer. Experience the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life every Monday at 1.30pm. Millionaire Radio? That sounds cool. I want to try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya. With your own money. Yeah. Can you tell me more about this? Apparently everyone's listening to this show now. That's because everyone wants money. They say that the victim, Glenelg, was really into gambling. Yep, he can't beat gambling. I love it too. Oh, Maya. <laughs> yeah, that is that the easiest cyclock in the series? It's gotta be, right? I won $500 last night playing cards with Nick. Huh? We were playing for money? Of course. So you'd better pay up. <laughs> You're a smart one. Waiting for a cop to be present before asking for the cash. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. 
All right, let's uh, let's start at the kitchen. See if Armstrong's here. This is like the plot of the film Friday. Oh, I oh, I think I saw that movie when I was a kid. If it's the same movie that I'm thinking of, but uh, I don't really remember it. Trabian kitchen. Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. I'll be back next month. Oi, natural element! I'll be waiting for you. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. None! I will have everything ready, I promise. I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> No, 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 no! Stop it! I beg you! Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. My nuns, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh, hey, by the way, we're over here. Um, sorry if we're interrupting anything. <laughs> oh, none! You do not have to worry. You know, you worry far too much. Maybe this will help you relax? It is the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. <laughs> oh. I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye. For now. Well. Oh, I have the shivers. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before it becomes the nervous wreck. There! Oh, oi, oi! That feels good. Ugh! Oh la la! Excusez-moi, monsieur! But my eyes, my eyes! <laughs> your eyes? If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this. La oil of sandalwood. Isn't this just the leftovers of what you were just using? Well. My French accent is wonderful. Good. <laughs> I, I don't like voicing this character. I feel like I'm being offensive in many different ways. <laughs> I apologise if I am. This character is just... Yeah. You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? Non, you are right, Monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, non? That way, I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you la dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right, business is very difficult these days. Perhaps the name is the problem. Perhaps people do not understand it. They think it is Trey. I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays? Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I would offend it to the finale. No one would take it from me. This character is inherently offensive. Don't worry about it. Okay. I can't be offensive about this guy. Nice. Good, good. Thanks, that's reassuring. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh, la la, you saw that? Ah, uh, well, yes. Sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. Not quite what I'd call her. <laughs> but polite, good graceful. And she likes raw meat and fires, right? I'll be back next month. Oi, natural element. I'll be waiting for you. Why are we getting a flashback? This just happened. If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. None! I will have everything ready, I promise. Now that I think about it. Hey, Maya. I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show him that piece of evidence and see what happens. Anything new around here? Seasonings, oyster sauce, sharp knives. Nothing new there. Poems. Ok, 
Okay, I thought they might have different dialogues since he's here now. Maybe about this? Little bottles, or the therapy oils. <laughs> and like, check out my badge. Please, Monsieur, there is no need to show me that. Ah. Yep, saying that. There, I guess we. Hey, what do you know about this? Um, about this. Ah, oh, yeah, seen this dialogue too. Got nothing to say about that. What about the medication? No? Okay. Poison! Nope. There. Dirty apron? Nope. Okay. There's even an element of transphobia to him, despite him not being trans. It's honestly quite extraordinary. Yeah! Yeah! It's just... Wow. Sometimes the nothing dialogue is too long. Yeah! Was Maya fired already? Uh, she she quit. She got bored of it, because there were no customers for her to serve. If only I had taken the right lottery ticket, I would not have any debts right now. I would be free. Look on the bright side, Mr. Armstrong. You won a dollar, right? A lack of remorse for having stolen something? Priceless. Yeah. Victim. Ah, okay. You don't have anything new to say until I show you that. So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with the la la broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. Oi, they kept harassing me for month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? My bien if I do not, if I did not owe them that money, I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? None, I, I cannot say. And second, no? If I tell you, that woman, she will slice me up. And eat me with the salad garnish. Ew. I hope it doesn't mean that he will literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm gonna guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract. Am I right? Ah! Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. Yeah, where's the Cyclox? The woman who was here earlier. I take it that she's... Um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in the debt. It is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. The woman who is here. The scary woman. She is from the loan office. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? Oi, tender lender it is called. Catchy name. Just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Don't. <laughs> Please, you must not borrow from them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipend, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. So tender lender is the loan officer you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. Ah, uh, probably, probably nothing to do with it. If you took the right ticket, he'd probably be in Maya's shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I am a weak woman. When I am upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me the money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I am like his slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who's this he? The tiger. The tiger? Oi, is the manager of the tender lender. A terrifying man. The big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of that battered old scootery rides, I start to cry. A big city monster who rides a battered old scooter. 
Um, does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, 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 no. This man has a presence. A most formidable personality. Although... Oi, he does have less spiky air, just like you. Oi, there is a resemblance there, I suppose. Yeah... I understand counting. Me too. Hmm. Sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit the tender lender, it is just beyond Vitamin Square. Hey Nick. If you need money, I can loan you some. As long as it's less than three dollars. Um, thanks for the offer. Just beyond Vitamin Square. Yeah. Uh, do we have anything new? Oh, okay. Bye! Hey, Gummy. Do you, Gummy? Vitamin Square. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Do you? That bloody scooter's here. Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seeds. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway. At least, not for now. Besides, any more seeds today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. <laughs> now, the scooter's here, but I don't see the dude. Hey, check this out. I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Otherwise you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine, a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick, lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? Hmm. Birds. Hey look, pigeons. Yeah, and heaps of them too. Did you know that pigeons are a symbol of peace? Ah, we've seen this dialogue. It can't be symbols of peace and harmony. Uh, is, is he hiding in the strawberry again? Same dialogue. No, okay. Yeah, I guess we'll go check out this tender Linda. Win through compromise, eh? Mm. Does there a type of pigeon? Oh, I didn't actually know that. That's cool. Tenderlender. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Oh. Talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. Yep, sir. You're here. To discuss a loan? Uh, no. Not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. She's gone. Just like that. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick. Let's take a look around, okay? Do you think it'd be okay? Of course. No one will ever know. Coffee? Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy. Quietly. Y yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk. Please. Nick! Let's get out of here! Now she wants to get out of here. But nope, we're gonna look around. CD player! There's a CD player on the desk. But the desk is so loud, it's a wonder you can hear it. <laughs> I get it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished? The coffee? Ah! Y yes, thanks. It was lovely. So, you drank it all? <laughs> oh. 
If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee. It was laced with something. I'm almost sure of it. Nick, my stomach. It's killing me. Oh, wait. Maybe it was just the burger I ate for breakfast. Uh, I sure hope so. We better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger? Heh heh. Heh heh. It's... it's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc in pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. MC Bomber added to the court record. Found at Tender Lender, a sample disc with the name written in marker. Hmm. Maya eats burgers for breakfast, apparently. <laughs> uh, hey, Sonatuka, how are you? Check this out. What's this? It's a punching bag. What? No way! You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What do you mean, walking around? The design's gross to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. And why is it called a punching bag? Don't people know messenger bags are in? I knew it. I was right before, back at Trabian. Paris fashion is more my thing. I really, really hope she's pulling my chain on this one. Oh. You should explain it to her. I think, I think Maya would love a punching bag. <laughs> you should get her one for the office. Let's see, this round doll thing is called a Daruma, I think. I figured I'd read a book or two and be more cultured, in case you're wondering. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? Eh, I bet you also didn't know that no matter what, he will always write himself. Go on, Nick, give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now, this yellow thing, this is a Japanese chess piece. I think it's a king? Not that I'm an expert or anything, I'm more of a reversey person, you know. Assuming she knows what she's talking about, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Ooh. Hey! There's a piece of paper sticking out from under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? $15,000 to replace a bumper and a light? That's insane! The car's registered to... The Cadaverinis? Cadaverinis? Huh? So it's not even the Tiger's car? Why would someone else's repair bill be in the Tiger's office? Repair bill. A car repair bill for $15,000. Paid by Tiger to the Cada Cadaverini family. Hmm. Hey, look at this Parisian style coat. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me. Guess I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. This suit is the same colour as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm. The same colour as my suit. Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. Then Nick, you've got to take a look at this. Some cake? Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Uh, yeah, sure. I, um, thanks. Just wait here quietly. Otherwise... Sh sure Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Y yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? Ah, uh, I'm scared, Nick. So? What were you getting so excited about? So? What were you getting so excited about before? Look, on the lapel of the suit... That's... that's an attorney's badge. <laughs> sure it is, Nick. <laughs> he doesn't even recognise the badge. Cadaverini would mean something like little corpse. Lovely, not at all creepy. Oh, great. That's the right tag. Don't worry. It's okay if you need to go to bed. This shop reminds you of a vintage store. Ah. Yeah. 
Is the tiger a lawyer? No way. Look at this thing. It's made of paper. Paper badge. Found at Tender Lender. Made of cardboard and painted to look authentic. For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognise an obviously fake badge when they see one? <laughs> Win through compromise? I wonder what that's supposed to mean. It must mean something if they took the trouble to frame it like that. Yeah, well, it still doesn't make any sense to me. That's... Ah! That's Tender Lender's guiding principle. Oh? Compromise the customer to win. Uh, oh, I see. How about you, Nick? Yeah, um, well, as long as we don't have to compromise my hair, I'd say we're okay. That's one slogan no business owner should ever explain to their customers. Ugh. Well. What have we got here? It's got save. Oh no, someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor. That's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I accidentally knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did she manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh hey, there's a book of matches here too. Book of matches here too. Matches, huh? Places don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Look what's printed on its cover. It says Trabian. Trabian matches. Matches used for advertising. Found lying in Tender Lender. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah, the pilot light for the office boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. Still gone. Ah! Come out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around in my office for? N nothing. We were just. Arr! My precious carpet! You've got ash on my rug! You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door! It wasn't us. It was a really like You just wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? You think you can take me on? I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs. Ah! Oh. Don Tiger, you're back. Back, that voice. It's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. I'm sorry, Don Tiger. I knocked over that ashtray earlier, and... Has she got a death wish, or what? Oh, right! Huh? F forget about it, Violetta. It's nothing. What, what, what? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You're too cute, you hear? That's so unfair. Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Grrr, Phoenix right? Y yes Yous are the crazy or just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you's gotta come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Heh, <laughs> but I don't care. No one gets in my way. What? I mean, excuse me? Heh, <laughs> you should have left a little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few- th <laughs> ah! No questions. This is the last time we meet. Uh, wait, but please. That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. <laughs> like you're one to talk. I didn't hear you scream, hold it either. The espresso. Ah! It's the real attorney's badge. How did Tiger steal it? 
very good. And cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it the tiger called her? Violetta? Well, did I finish looking around? The rug. That's one impressive desk on one impressive rug. It's solid gold, Nick. Gold. Just look at that shine. Only real gold shines like that. Would you really want such a shiny desk, though? I don't know, but let's see what it's like to sit at a solid gold desk. Wow, I'm completely dazzled. That's because it's completely dazzling. I can see up my nose in the reflection. That's got to be really distracting. So the desk isn't practical. No surprise there. Talk to this lovely lady. Why is he so red? I don't know. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Lender. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business, a conscientious rate of interest, and an attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling this sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit extra here at Tender Lender. Hey Nick, things are a bit tight for Ryan Co. at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game for starters. <laughs> Why don't you take out a loan? Would I like to take out a loan from a place like this? Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> so, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We'd give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. Save in case she leaves. Could just be gold paint. Yeah, it's probably just gold paint. So, um, do you know about the incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger? Furio Tiger. F Furio? T tiger? So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Zinniop's got a real name, Nick! Hurry up and find out more about him! Have we got him in our profiles now? But first, check out my badge. Um, about this. More coffee? You must have more. No, um, thanks. I've had enough. Really. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I don't leave the office. I can't tell you about anything. Except Don Tiger. Yeah, that's a good hint from the game. Well, these were in the office, so... Yeah, okay. Fake badge! Now we can fake badge people as well as real badge them. Double the badging. Violetta, age question mark. Possibly part of the staff at Tender Lender? A thoroughly bitter person. Furio Tiger, age 42. The head of the Tender Lender Loan Company. Also known as the Tiger. Oh, doesn't want to talk about herself either. Can I ask you about the Tiger? I mean, Mr. Tiger. Cookie? Ch sure. How do you like my cookies? I bake them myself. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. The honour is all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. <laughs> no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and the scary girl doing working together? We are lovers. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owe Don Tiger my life. He's the one who saved me. The tiger saved you? Please address him properly as Don Tiger. Otherwise, I'll have to. Okay, okay. Don Tiger. I 
Of course, I'm sorry. He saved her life. I'd sure like to know how that happened. Well, why don't we ask about it, Nick? I'm very frail, you see. Just recently, I died. Once. <laughs> you d died? About four months ago. The doctors said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the River Styx. But Don Tiger, he saved me. He gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offence, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. Still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you've got that bandage around your head? <laughs> this? Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. <laughs> a fatal injury? Maya just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So, that's the injury you were talking about before when you said you had died once? Oh. Four. Yeah, I think this is the only interesting character I find in this case. The rest I can just... This one though, I'm finding her kind of cool. In Japanese, his, you think his name was Toranosuke. Toranosuke. Tiger Boy. That's cool. Uh, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here. But we've got to find out the truth. Hmm. Alright then. Oh, that is great. Yeah, she's pretty interesting. If she died, that means Maya can channel her and we can find out everything super easy, right? <laughs> exactly! Alright, is she going to talk about anything else now? No? Okay. Hmm. I doubt we have enough to break those locks, but let's check out what they have, uh, what they start off with. Oh. Take that! The head bandage. You said that bandage around your head was from an operation? You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes. The operation was very... difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? <laughs> Did the injury in question have something to do with this? So I'm gonna guess... it's... The car... yeah, it was a car accident, I'm gonna guess. Also, might have something to do with paper badge. Well? Donuts? Yes, please! I would love some donuts! Huh? I baked them myself. Homemade donuts. Have one. Um, what's inside? Jam and... I'm sorry, but I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> um... Thanks, but no thanks. I think I'll pass. I guess that was a flop. What happened to this woman for her to have such a huge bandage around her head? There must be some piece of evidence that'll prompt her to tell me what happened. Oh, I got an achievement! Violetta's homemade donuts. <laughs> okay, I haven't looked at the achievements in quite a while, so that was lucky. What achievements do we have left? Bad gateway. Okay, cool. 502 Bad Gateway. Uh, that page isn't working at the moment. Alright, so I'm going to try the repair bill. Yeah! Now I have a second badge to flash. Yes! <laughs> I have here a car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to 
The Cadaverines. Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverines have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. Alright then. Your relationship with the Cadaverines is very strong. And this is why. Anyway, I don't think we have this one. Nope. But maybe it's... Paper badge. So, what do you have to say for yourself now? Pretzels? For you. Huh? Don't worry about the little white specks on the surface. I just sprinkled a small quantity of... No thanks. My evidence must still be half-baked. I really don't know. The Cadaverinis. Further. I don't think... Yes, I'm guessing she's... One of them. She's from that family. Here we go. Get more clues. Load my game. Get our health back. I don't think I can show you anything else. What if I show you the repair bill? Nah. Nope. Okay. Saw ya. Bye. Vitamin Square. There he is. Old CD's back feeding the pigeons again. Oh, great. <laughs> There, take this, and this, and get out of my park! Like I thought, he's really mad. Come on, Maya. Just keep your head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello, old man? What are you doing, Maya? Huh? Kah. Hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm not surprised. I bet I really hurt his pride in court this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo. <clears throat> Pigeon. <clears throat> Look, we really need to talk to you, alright? Out with the demons. In with good fortune. Ow, 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 ow. Seeds. Shell splinters. Painful. I always knew you were a demon, Maya. <laughs> that video is taking forever to process. Yeah, sometimes it does take ages for YouTube. Is it YouTube? Yeah, sometimes it takes a while for YouTube to process stuff. Um, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Kah! Everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who was so busy looking at the serving girl's backside that he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. No, not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I saw that waitress put it in. She put some white powder into that young lad's javachino. Hmm. I wonder. We hear you. And another thing. The young layabout was wearing an earpiece. On the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles. We're, we're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. Okay, take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spiky head brat. Take this. Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Kah! The modern world casts honest craftsmen like me aside in droves. Sh surely it's not that... I come from a long line of craftsmen. Right back to the time of the Shoguns. Do you hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer. I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I... Uh... I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose and scream right down his ear hole. Objection! Oh. So, did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood. That's all. I've got a tsunami of frustration inside and it's ready to burst out. If we let him start rambling now, we might never shut him up. What should I do? Cut in or suck it up. 
Eh, let's listen. He might have something important to say. Guess I better let him talk. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Of course not, you idiot! All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk, Grandad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I? Some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread. Now that I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost! That's what they're trying to say. Ah oh, yes, I'm just an inconvenience, you see. At home, at that restaurant. I just get in the way, don't I? Uh, I'm sure you don't. Wait a minute. What did he just say? At home and at that restaurant? Hold up. By restaurant, are you talking about Trabian? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes, I did. The very day that young brat was poisoned. Well, what? Hmm. So on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy. Because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over the table. The serving girl collapsed. Then I broke that vase. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see. Then the owner shouted over to me. Excuse me, you, call the police. Call them yourself, I should have said back. But I didn't think of it at the time. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? Kah! Do I look like I'd have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? I went out looking for a payphone, of course. You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around for five minutes or so. For five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened? Yes, sirree. The owner was at Trabian on his own. Well, Welp. Why didn't you mention this in court that morning? This morning. Well, I would have if you'd given me the chance. But you all bullied me out of the courtroom. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes, I remembered something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. It's not my fault. You're the ones to blame. You could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman, I mean that man, alone in the restaurant. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, sure. You go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead. Hmm? We need to get more details about what exactly happened. From Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Hmm. Um, would you mind taking a look at this? Kah! Excuse me? You let me get a million of my grumbles off my chest, and I'll take one quick look. I've got an earthquake of frustration inside, and it's ready to rumble. On second thought, forget it. A million grumbles for one quick look doesn't sound like a good deal. For me. <laughs> well, if it's a giant bomb quick look, it might be worth it. Okay, have you seen this person? No. Nope, you're not going to be helpful. How about her? Nope, you're not helpful. Anything to say about her? Nope, you're not helpful. Got her? Yeah. Alright, yeah, I guess we go talk to Armstrong and Maggie. Hey, Gummy. Let you get some stuff we found. Matches. Hmm. 
Hmm. Paper badge. Oh, I was really hoping for, di for dialogue about the paper badge. I was hoping he'd mistake it for ours. Yeah. A CD. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, pal. All I can think about is Maggie at the moment. N no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant... You don't have to explain. Really. Alright. See ya, gummy. Trebian Kitchen. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. But the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Oh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. Hmm. That would make sense. Alright, let's talk to Maggie then. No Maggie? Alright. What the hell's going on at the, the cop shop? No, okay. Let's see if you have something to say about her. Oh. Tiger? Huh? Hmm, oh, okay. I guess I have to show something to that dude. The old man. Is there something I can show Gumshoe that I haven't yet? I don't think so. Do 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 Did he leave something here maybe? Something different? Uh, lace curtains. Gross food. Isn't that what I ate yesterday for lunch? Yeah, I think it's been permanently burned into my brain now. As an example of what truly awful food tastes like. I bet it tastes really good if it was prepared well. Also me even. Um, I'll see if we can find something to show this guy first. Maybe I'll go back to Tenderland there. Maybe we can talk to the. No, okay. Okay. I haven't got the evidence we need for that yet, I don't think. There's surprisingly few characters in this case, actually, isn't there? There's only these four. Something to say about Armstrong, maybe. Yeah. Now, what did I show him? I oops. I forget what I've shown him. What I haven't. Armstrong? Nope. if I ask you about your testimony? No? Hmm. Alright, uh, who do I need to talk to? Do you know?
That scooter's still here. Gum shoe, okay. Oh, we've got new dialogue here. Looking at this orange reminds me of what? You're supposed to eat lots of them to ward off colds in the winter. You can't have fun during the holidays if you're sick in bed, you know. Speaking of fun, if we get Maggie quitted, maybe we can all get together sometime. Okay, but what do we play with someone who's never even won a game of tic-tac-toe? How about we change the rules a bit then? We could play old maid and, um, we could say the person who's left with the old maid at the end is the winner. How's that? Not bad. Not bad at all. We could even rename the game to Fair Maiden. Kind of cool. Yeah, do it. Talk to Gummy. Hey, Mr. Fahrenheit. Um, I don't think you ever get red herring evidence. I think everything gets used at some point for something. Although, uh, stuff sticks around long after you need it. Like, we did need to show this to someone to talk about things at some point. That was yesterday, though. But yeah, stuff sticks around after you, you're finished with it, so... Hmm. This guy was a real programming genius. They called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes through? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Oh, he wasn't literally a computer, mate. Oh. What happens when he crashes, though? Yeah. It wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? F fun? I, uh... Oh, I know. So, have you paid a visit to where Mr. Elg worked yet? You might as well. Ah, thank you, Pennykin. Nice. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc. Or something like that. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about that high-tech stuff. I wonder about that. It's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screens Inc. Huh? Well, I'm going to head back to the precinct now. We've got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. Bye. Hmm, okay. Oh, came back. <laughs> I love how the music faded back in. Y you better get going, Detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, um... I've kind of got a favour to ask. It's a big one. A favour? Yeah, it's for, um... Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping... You'd give this to her for me. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. Oh. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of their tender juiciness. So will you give it to her? It took me ages to make. So please say you will, pal. I can't exactly say no, can I? Gumshoe's lunchbox. Given to Maya to carry. <laughs> Don't give food to her to carry. <laughs> A tenderly made lunchbox. Fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. <laughs> Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. Aww. He's finally gone. Uh, let's check out Blue Screens Inc. And then I'll... Go see if we can talk to Maggie. Oh, this place is blue, all right.
cute cat. She's on the couch. What's the time? Oh, not time for dinner yet. Sorry, cat. Blue screens ink. Wow, this place is so high tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer, Fermire. They can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? Oh, well. Oh, um, hello. I'm sorry, access is restricted to authorised personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot from some kind of whacked edumacational show. Edumacational? <laughs> My name is Lisa Basil. I'm the company director. The director? Sh she's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. <laughs> and that thing over, over her eye. Isn't that the same device as Glenelg's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HMDs. Then do you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. Her hair is amazing. <laughs> that colour. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. Oh, <laughs> it's alright, Tag. I've been having some practice. Every person who works at Blue Screen Inc. has a name that's a palindrome. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyse the data management systems required by certain branches of industry and then deliver optimum operating systems and source level components to add to them. Huh? You lost me on the corner of analyse and management. It doesn't matter. They analyse stuff. You got that much, right? The software we produce is distributed on CDs. Oh. Okay. I've got a theory. Yeah. CDs? Yes. Compact disc. Digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It is a small firm, but all of my employees are first class programmers. Let's ask one of them what they are doing. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time slicing on logical access to shared global variables. Obviously, program structure influences response time and performance. So the co-independent variable with the memory overheads is vitally important to success the execution. Well, you get the idea. This is the sort of thing we are involved in. Did you good people follow all of that? Y y yeah Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. <laughs> Yeah, I really like your uh, your voice acting tag. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean about Glenn being poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier too. But I couldn't tell him anything either, because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens, Inc. Oh. How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's this one, right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. Okay. Check out my badge! Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry. That data is Super Admin Restricted Desktop Access Password Protected. Super Admin Restricted Desktop Access Password Protected? What? This is madness! No, Maya, that is Sparta. She won't tell us unless we say the right code word. A code word? Hmm. 
Sesame. If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glenelg. What do you say? Hey, you want some lunch? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, oh. God, that's a long one. It takes ages to get through this one if you ask her about the wrong thing. Could I ask her about the medication? I guess I'll just ask her about Glenelg and see how we go from there. Lisa Basil, age question mark. The CEO of Blue Screens Inc. and Glenelg's boss. Absolutely not a robot. <laughs> Good. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one or two bugs in his personality. Oh? Like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute. Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out what this trouble was exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting character. You love how she moves slightly to better present the portraits. Yeah, it's cool. The source code of Sparta is just heavy metal and pizza, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna look at the desk. Whoa! Look at this desk, Nick! What a mess! Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with, with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know. She's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry then. Hey! This calendar! What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elg was murdered. Is there anything else? Yeah. Um, it says, meet with the tiger. The, the tiger? Glenn's calendar. Hmm. On December 3rd, the day of the incident, there is a note saying, meet with the tiger. Well. Was he in debt? Or is mm, this a... Mm, hmm. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Thinking. Thinking. Hey, look, Nick. It's a supercomputer. It looks like it's really smart and wise, doesn't it? Computers are only as smart as the humans who use them, Maya. That explains why we don't use the computer in our, our office. <laughs> you work there too, Maya. Yeah, but at least I'm... Please, don't argue about something that's so trivial. Otherwise the computer will laugh at you. She said she'd laugh at us, Nick. She's a human, Maya, not a computer. <laughs> yeah, she's a cool character. I wish she was in this... this case more. I like her a lot better than the other characters. He's really pounding that keyboard, isn't he? Wow, I bet that's where the pro in programmer comes from, huh? I guess I shouldn't be resting on my laurels. Gotta expand my skill set and all that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I could become old CD's apprentice. Um, and what about your spirit medium training? Bing, bing. Those pillars almost look like they're moving. It's kind of unsettling. Nah, they just look a bit twisted or warped or whatever word I'm looking for. This office was designed with a futuristic feel in mind. Futuristic? Yes, we tried to imagine what things might look like in the future when we designed it. It helps to soothe and calm the soul. On second thought, I agree with you, Nick. This place is really unsettling. <laughs> Wow, look at this mess! Looks like they're all betting tickets. 
What kind of betting tickets? Oh, uh oh. He got into debt by gambling, didn't he? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Oh, wow. His drawers are stuffed full of these. Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. Vanell's losing horse race tickets gathered up. Horse race, horse racing betting tickets found in Glenel's desk. There's over 500 of them. Wow. Bad programmers are just grammars, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> According to Maya, this many tickets would get you what? A buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you'd try to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Well. Can you tell me about them tickets? Really? Okay. But, fine. What about December 3rd? No? Hmm. But this is about Glenelg. Yeah. Tell us about yourself? No? Nah, she doesn't really have much to say, does she? Gotta love this theme without having to deal with Director Hottie. Yeah, agreed! <laughs> oh, I didn't catch on that counting. An implication that Maya just dropped out of high school. Interesting. Do we need to stab her with Sparta to access her data or something? <laughs> Very good. Well, I think we're done here for now. I kind of don't want to show her too much stuff because the dialogue is so long. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go talk to uh, Maggie. Yeah. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Attention center. Visitor's room. Oh, Mr. Bright! Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you. Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm going to stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. Yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Ah. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. Uh, I'm not sure if I asked her about the medicine. I'll, I'll go check. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not with what I remember of the incident anyway. Is it possible she is the one misremembering things? I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. I don't remember if I showed her the ear medicine one. Nah. Bogger. Yeah, I feel like there's something I need to show her, but I don't know what it is, and I kind of don't want to test too many things. I'll just see if we can progress elsewhere first. Here we go. Contradictions. Maggie, you know how you said that everyone else provided testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember? Yep, there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put some white powder into the coffee cup? Hmm. So you really think it was this disappearing man that did it? Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber Meyer. That name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. You said that you passed out when the victim, Glenelg, collapsed, right? 
Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived on the scene, you have no idea what went on at Treby Inn. No, no idea at all. Why? Is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old Seedy wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a bit, a brief period of time. No! You, you don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Oh, it's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. <laughs> Are you sure about this, Mr. Ride? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. The things that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old Seedy. Alright. But check out my badge too. That badge! Is it real? Of course it's real. That's what they all say. But I've been duped before. That's right, she bites it, doesn't she? Yeah. The background police officer looks so weird. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> background police officer is actually Big the Cat. <laughs> Check out the fake badge! Ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes! That's it! Huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Wright. You got duped by this. But it's a completely different colour. And what about the fact that it's made of paper? He said the badge got a tan as well while he was in Hawaii on business. I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain her trust. Alright, tell us about the old man. Uh, I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man, though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Huh? Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? <laughs> no, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. Hmm, okay. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling. Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Hmm. 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 <laughs> You're beginning to think that maybe she wasn't a very good cop. Oh. <laughs> you. Have some water. It's feeding time, but uh, she's asleep. I'll keep going until we hit a break point. 
Oh, uh, I have lots of stuff I can show you. Let's start with... Let's ask you about Gumshoe first. Back when I was an officer, Detective Gumshoe always looked out for me. But today... Today I was the one who had to look out for him, trying to incriminate me the whole time. You've got to remember, Maggie. Gumshoe's a detective. He's got a job to do. My old boss. I thought at least he'd be on my side. He is on your side. He'd do anything to... You can't fool me. I saw him in court today. I felt like a poor little baby woodpecker being pecked on the head by its own mother. Gumshoe's testimony was pretty solid. No wonder it hurt her so much. I hate him, sir. I mean it. I don't ever want to see him again. Ouch. I think I just saw Gumshoe's chances go down in flames like the Hindenburg. I don't think it's getting through to her that he really was trying to help. Alright, let's give you the lunch. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I've got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox? Weenies too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? Nah, he was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort into making this too. I can't accept it. Detention centre rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are the rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. And anyway... I hate weenies! Uh, oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But, but... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But... I guess so. Aww. Come she's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Aww! Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Aww. Well, that didn't go well. Well... Do you have anything different to say about him now? No. Okay. Alright, let's see, I'll ask you about... I'll ask you about these characters too. Tiger! Holy smokes! That's him! Huh? That's your phony, Mr. Wright! Just look at that ridiculous suntan! Um, for the record, I'm not sunburned like an overdried tomato, so I don't know how. He told me he'd been on a business trip to Hawaii, and that's where he got the tan. I'm not hearing this. Oh, really? You didn't recognise her? Okay, she doesn't recognise Viola. Violetta. Whatever. Mr. Armstrong was very good to me after I was fired from the force. I can't believe someone as nice as him could have anything to do with this. Well, in the time between the victim being poisoned and the police being called, the only person who was on the scene and had a chance to do anything was Mr. Armstrong. There was no one else there. M Mr. Armstrong wouldn't. He wouldn't set me up, would he? And I asked you about him, didn't I? Yeah. Do you have anything different to say? No. Okay, Glenelg. Ah, that's the victim, isn't it? That day was the first time you'd ever seen this man, right? Yes. I'd never met or seen him before then. I just happened to be the waitress who served him his coffee, sir. That's all. It seems he was a computer programmer. Really? I'm useless with computers. Completely hopeless. I don't know any computer programs. Did she mention programmers? No matter what happens, I never let things get me down. You're always so positive, aren't you, Maggie? Macho Maggie bird, they say. The early bird catches the worm. A bird in the hand. Have you ever seen... Uh... 
This dialogue. Got it. Nah, nothing to say about him. Also, just show out all the profiles because we're almost done doing that. Oh, yeah. Thanks for your help last year. Oh, it was nothing. I'm glad we got you off the hook. I hope you can help me out this year too. Yeah, me too. It'd be sweet if we could get that verdict overturned. Alright, uh, what evidence could you have something to say about? The sports paper? That's the paper the victim had with him, isn't it? That's what we think, madam. I kind of remember him having a paper, actually. And I remember something about this MC Bomber, too. It was written on the CD that disappeared as well, wasn't it? I don't suppose it makes any difference if there was one CD or two, right? Just thinking about the trial that day gives me the creeps. Was it that bad? So don't forget it was my phony, not me. He was supposed to say, Surely the defendant isn't the real criminal. But instead he shouted out, Surely the defendant is the real criminal. By mistake. Oh, ouch. But like I said, that was my phony, not me. I, I don't want to think about it anymore. Trust me, neither do I. Job listings. Nope, okay. The food. Why is the food so bad? No, okay. Have you seen this scooter before? No, okay. Right, I guess I'll ask about the CD. We have a lot of evidence, oh my god. Really? I thought you'd recognise the CD. Okay. Hmm, don't know if there's anything else I can show her. Okay, repair bill. Mean a radio prescription bag? Do you recognise this? No? Potassium cyanide. Potassium cyanide? I've never heard of that poison before in my life, sir. Okay, maybe I have. But I've never seen it before. That's the truth. I wouldn't even know where the nearest potassium cyanide dealer is in the first place. Potassium cyanide dealers? Sounds like another group of drug pushers to avoid. In any case, this definitely isn't something you can pick up just anywhere. Oh, curse my rotten luck. The criminal must have stuck the bottle in my apron while I was unconscious. Speaking of the apron. Oh yeah, that's from when I was carrying a customer's breakfast over to them. The ketchup splotch you mean? My whole face was fire engine red thanks to that stuff. But you spilled the ketchup on your apron, didn't you? I don't see how... The ketchup covered omelette went flying and hit the customer in the face. Oh, talk about a tomato red face. Makes me wish I could have seen it myself. Yeah, I guess. It was kind of a sight to behold. <laughs> a lottery ticket. Oh, okay. Coffee cup. That's the cup I took over to the table, sir. But I didn't put anything in it. I just... I could never do something like that. That's right. You could never do anything like that. I'm not good at carrying those large trays, you know. Trying to balance a tray with one hand to put something in the coffee with the other. That'd just be asking for trouble. I'd drop something for sure. Th that's right. Is she expecting me to claim that she's too clumsy to have committed the crime? <laughs> Will that hold up in court? I doubt it. Floor plans? Nope. Okay. Autopsy report. Victor's testimony. Nope. Are you talking about Victor again? Now, do you know about this loan contract? No? Okay. I think we're done here. I'll go see if there's anything we can do at the precinct now. Police Station, Criminal Affairs Department. The main server just went up in smoke! Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already! Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet too. I already told you to stop using your computer, chief! 
But I'm watching videos online. I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas. It's gonna have to wait, Chief. I'm throwing the switch. No! Just when some young guy was about to confess to his son's hot to trot girlfriend. <laughs> That's a Wayne's World reference. Some young guy. Wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going down. Something's something really big. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe! You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here today. Some young guy was about to confess to his son's girlfriend. Oh, I, I didn't even catch that. I was, I was too busy thinking about the Wayne's World reference. Ew. 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 <laughs> We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? Computer virus? It's a virus! A virus! Yep. A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system. But I really need to ask you some questions. Okay, I'm only going to say this once, so listen up. Y yes. No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay? If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. Uh, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender lender is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy handed calling in all their debts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in their business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. Alright, I get the picture. Hey, wait a minute. What did he just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We better find out what the story is with this lady. If you're in a financially tight spot, ask Damon for $50. <laughs> Who's that lady? <laughs> so what exactly is a computer virus, Detective Gumshoe? I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, alright pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. What's with that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simple terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. I'm surprised Gumshoe doesn't know about viruses. I guess he's not good with computers? He's good with electronics, though. Yeah, Case 2-4 had him being very good with electronics, so... Hmm. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is... um... Well, it's all internal. So the inside goes boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa! That's scary! Yeah, and what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Oh, just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you're sneezing on Mr. Gotto so he catches a cold. Right. Then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. Who? What? Where? When and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? Anyway, 
That's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. Yep. The name of the virus, huh? I feel like I've heard it before, too. MC Bomber. Yeah, he was, uh... He was asked to make a virus by Tiger. Yeah, he went... Yeah, yeah that, my theory is he went into debt because of his gambling addiction. He borrowed money from Tiger, and Tiger made him make a virus. What the virus is for, I'm not sure. Maybe to destroy his criminal record? No, no, no. Um, yeah. Alright, check out my badge. Uh, same dialogue. Uh, oh yeah, about Maggie. Um, that didn't go so well. Yeah, same dialogue. Bum 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 bum. There we go. Can I ask you about Violetta? That's the girl who works over at Tender Linda. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's Viola Cad Cadaverini. Knew it. She's the only granddaughter of Bruto Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruto Cadaverini's the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverini's? That's one scary sounding name. We can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? N no! I don't remember ever saying I was going to. I better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. Oh, this guy, the tiger. Is he famous? Yeah, this guy's not a lone shark, you know. Nope, he's a big lone cat. Hence the name. Don't pay him back, and you'd better say your prayers, because he'll eat you alive. You're shaking, detective. Like a leaf. I'm just, you know, kind of on edge at the moment, if you know what I mean. That lady is the boss of Blue Screens Inc, pal. Yeah, I figure she's clean. She's got nothing to hide. She seemed kind of like a doll to me. In a good way, and a bad way. Kind of makes you think she might be hiding something. <laughs> she got nothing to hide. Might be hiding something. <laughs> you know what that chef said to me? Ah, oh, same. Same. Same, same. Alright, tell me about the family. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who. You're a cop and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, it doesn't matter if you're a kid or a cop. These guys are scary. They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Lender, I take it? Sure. No one stands up to Bruto Cadaverini. And I mean no one. Interesting. So, Viola's the granddaughter of some mafia boss then? Yeah. And everyone knows how much Bruto loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So, how did she end up at Tender Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tender Lender are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in a file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Aha! Bruto Cadaverini, age 78. The head of the Cadaverini family crime syndicate. Seems to live for his granddaughter. Do we have her whole name here? Ah, oh, yeah, we do. 
the granddaughter of crime boss Bruto Cadaverini. Age 25. Okay. Hey Shizzle, how are ya? What did you miss? Um, all sorts actually. Um, so we found out where the victim works. He works at a company called Blue Screens Inc. Which that, oh yeah, he's a programmer and it seems like he may have made a computer virus. Yeah, I think I think this is actually a computer virus, not a music CD. Yeah, it seems like he was in debt because he has a gambling addiction. Yes, yeah, so he's in debt to the, this tiger dude, our imposter. And he's a lone shark, sorry, lone kitty, lone tiger, whatever. And then there's also a big crime uh, family involved as well, the Cadaverinis. I haven't quite figured out how they factor in yet. Yeah, so it seems like the victim was... It got a loan from this guy and was forced to make a virus. It wasn't Armstrong's mixtape. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, now there's a that that virus is now wrecking their computers here at the precinct. Uh, what was I going to show you? Oh yeah, Bruto. Tell me more about Bruto. Sorry, I wouldn't go flashing that photo around if I were you, pal. Why not? That guy rules the criminal underworld. You could get yourselves in serious trouble. I'm talking say your prayers trouble. You're shaking, detective. Like a leaf. I'm just, you know, kind of on edge at the moment. If you know what I mean. Hmm. Anything else I can show him, I wonder? How about... Tickets? No. Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-bum, be-be-doo, be-doo, do 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 Check out my paper badge! No? Okay. The matches! Yeah, okay. I think we're done talking to Gumshoe for now. Did I show him the bomber seat? Ah! Okay. Ah! This is it! This stupid name! I remember now! I thought so. Here it comes. Don't just nod to yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. The name scribbled on that sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber. What? Yeah, the virus that's just infected every computer in the station, pal. It's MC Bomber. Can you give us any more details, please? Nah, probably not. Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and this virus right now, so I... There we go. That was the first bit of dialogue that I skipped past. If some reason I thought I'd shown him the CD, but I guess not. I was thinking of, because I showed the CD to Maggie, and she didn't react, so that's why I was thinking I had shown it to him. I got mixed up. We already knew about the MC Bomber virus from a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hotshots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah. It's in every computer and every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts. They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses. It almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Apparently the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because this one's so powerful. They're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? MC Bomber updated. Found at Tender Lender. Contains a computer virus program. Oh, I can't believe it! I almost forgot the most important thing! Uh, and that is... You know, the lunchbox! How did everything go? Oh, not so well. So he gave us a lunchbox to give to Maggie. Because Maggie's not happy with him at the moment. And... well... She didn't want it. I'll try showing him the hospital bill. The lunchbox? 
You, you remember the weenies? I hate weenies! Oh, yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? Huh? Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said? Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh! Do me a favour again, huh, pal, and deliver this? This sure is a heavy burden. In more ways than one. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick? Tell me we don't have to eat all these too. Gumshoe's lunchbox given to Maya. Again. <laughs> Gumshoe's lunchbox. A tenderly made lunchbox. Fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. I really can't eat any more. <laughs> well. Don't forget to give that to Maggie, okay? But they don't allow presents for the prisoners in the detention centre, right? Hey, you're right. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm counting on you to get it to her somehow. I'm a lawyer, not a delivery boy, Gumshoe. Car repair bill. Alright, nothing to say about that. Yeah. Right. Let's see what these two are up to again. This must be the chief of the detectives. He looks lost. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to read the paper now. Alternately, you could read some reports. Just a suggestion. What the heck is this? This paper's more than a month old. And someone's written all over it. Who's the clown that put this on my desk? Well, speak up. He just wadded it up and chucked it in the trash. But that's an important piece of evidence. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Your batteries won't last forever. Remember that when you're having fun. In bed. We have a winner. A little joke to make people think about their smoke alarms. <laughs> what? <laughs> He must be coming up with slogans for a fire safety campaign. I guess? Does he even know what he's trying to get across anymore? <laughs> the writing in this game! <laughs> One of the localizers was, uh... Well... A bit excited. Yeah, I guess that's all here. Gumshoe took that, that container to test. Did he ever give it back? That container we found at uh, the restaurant, maybe this will remind him? No? Okay. Weird. Hmm. Very horny case, yeah! Might have said the exact same things in the Japanese version. Oh yeah, yeah, that's 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 true. Could be just as a... Uh... Oh, she gone! Oh. Yeah. Well then. Trabian it is. Is Armstrong back? Nope. Alrighty then. Um, is there anything I can show you? Hey, do you know this guy? Nope, okay. Yeah, this is where the victim worked. Is that gonna be a thumbnail? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Say ya. Hi. Do you know this guy? Yeah. You don't really have anything to say. Don't ask him about Tiger. Yeah, I did. Well, we might be able to break her Cyclops now. Okay. Let's try. Take that. Take that. Take 
Gummy just finished telling me not to go around flashing Bruno's mugshot. <laughs> it's Phoenix, right? What else can you do but show everything to everyone? The head bandage. Alright, let's have this first part broken. An operation. Fatal injury. Operation was difficult. She was hurt badly somehow. And we think it was in a car accident. Car repair bill. Car repair bill. What do the cav cadaverinis have to do with me? Well, we've got your actual name now, lady. And you're a cadaverini. Oh. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? Hmm. It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family's cars when someone pulled out in front of me. Ah. It was a motorbike, or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyway, I swerved to try to avoid it, but... It was Tiger. Hmm. I took a blow to the head. A bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with injuring THE Viola Cadaverini, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away. Or so I heard. Ran away? If they'd stayed, I'd have... <laughs> hmm. Is it possible? Could the person who committed the hit and run been... Oh, I wanted my profile. That was probably Gotto. The person who caused the accident that gave you that injury was... No more. I don't want to think about it anymore. Here, try one of these tomatoes. We all picked them together as a family and I added my own special flavouring. No thanks. The person who caused the accident was riding a motorbike. Who could it be? Hmm, is it possible? Tiger! It was Tigger. Tiger. It was this man, wasn't it? He was the cause of your accident. It wasn't Don Tiger. I refuse to believe it. What is the sound that Tigger makes in Winnie the Pooh? He has like a weird laugh or something, doesn't he? I wanted to make that laugh, but I couldn't think of it. We collided. The motorbike and my car. But Don Tigu isn't injured at all, is he? It was the tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. Plus, one of her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini. But I have proof that the tiger was involved in a traffic accident on his bike. Or well, his bike's busted. Also, my badge might have been involved. And this is my proof! Hard-boiled eggs? Please, try one. Eggs? I raised the chickens these eggs came from myself. I invented a special diet so that chicks would be blue. But no thanks. What? Blue? It was the tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. Oh, is it pronounced more like tea grey? Maybe. I like saying tiger though, it's fun to say. A Tigger and Big the Cat game will be game of the century. <laughs> anyway. Show you the scooter. That's a scooter, that's not a motorbike, it's a scooter! Take that. Take that! It's not exactly a motorbike, but... Mr. Tiger rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini, you know the truth, don't you? <laughs> this repair bill was paid by Furio Tiger. The Cadaverinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. 
somewhere inside me. I know that may be true. I knew it. But... Don Tiger still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very, very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving me an actual figure. I should back off. Well, anyway, it was the tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tiger told me he said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? Do you want to know what I think? I think the reason he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. Maya. She's pretty scary, you know. I know this must be quite a shock for you, but... Overcoat? S sorry? I made it myself. It's been so... cold lately. Yeah, just hearing your voice sends shivers down my spine. Please, try it on. Oops. What was the oops for? I'm missing a few pins. I must have left them in the coat. One second thought, I'm fine, thanks. Roasty toasty, that's me. <laughs> roasty toasty. Phoenix right, roasty toasty. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be tea grey. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Don Tiger told me, you see. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. So is he pretending to... To be in love with her? Yeah. Oh, that's... That is pretty awful. Your... Grandfather. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but... Your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation costs, but... If you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini, do you think Mr. Tiger would have paid the money? One million dollars. Wow. I was wondering if I should restart to get more health, but I don't know, that health seems alright. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. A, a, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tiger to pay one million dollars. In compensation. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? This, is, this has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tiger said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. Oh, but I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was... it was... evil. He said it was all for me, so I... I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. Viola's medical papers. A one million dollar bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Wow, I feel so bad for Viola. 
It's inexcusable. Huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. So other kinds of murder are okay? <laughs> Is everything alright, Nick? Ah, okay, yep, yep, I just got it. Because it reminds him of uh, what happened with Dahlia. We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of this. Repair bill thrown into the trash. Well, I guess we're done here. Oh, there's another lock in this case. I'll need my health to badge every lock. Ah, <laughs> I can get my health back from that lock though, can't I? Well, geez, her story was uh, pretty heartbreaking. All right. Um, can we see this dude yet? Nope, not yet. Hey, blue screens. Hi. You must be here for a reason, right? Eh, I doubt it. Alright, where to now? I guess maybe we go talk to Gumshoe? Maybe Maggie's showing up. Nope. Hmm. Hmm, doesn't have anything to say about that. Okay, well we broke her lock, but all we got out of it was this. So who are we going to show this to? I mean, I'm guessing Tiger, but I can't see him around anyway. Hey Maya. Any ideas? No? Alright. Okay. It's kind of awkward that you can't get to the restaurant from here. Got to go through a lot of different screens in this one. Alright, who, who shall I talk to? I tried showing her the CD, didn't I? But she didn't have anything to say. Yeah, yeah, who, who do I need to talk to now? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for a hint. Yeah, just let me know who I need to talk to and then I, I'll try and figure it out from there. So my very blue. Ah, okay, cool, cool. So we are gonna do some more stuff here. Alright, what can I show you? Papers? Nope. I forgot it takes so long. Okay, what haven't I shown you? I think I showed you both of those. I showed you that, didn't I? Make sure. Do, 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 do. Hang on, code word, code word. If I show you that. Nope, okay. Okay, um... Pretty sure I showed, yeah, I showed her that several times. Do you know Bruto, maybe? Nope. Hmm. I mean, I think I've shown you him. Well, he says 
bugs in my personality. Bit of a loser. Got him into trouble. And then you, you took it back. Oh. I don't want to talk to her about this. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry? Why would you think that? I thought you said something about it just now. You said he got himself into trouble because he was a bit of a loser. Ah. Three Cyclops. I guess Mr. Elg is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Ha! <laughs> the references in this game. So many. I'll save first. Bam, 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 bam. Take that! Yeah, metallic blue and translucent blue. Yeah, I love them as well. Blue's my favourite colour. Glenn's Troubles. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess I'd better just take a shot and see where it gets me. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elg's troubles have something to do with this? A badge. Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. Let's ask one of the programmers. Excuse me, can you answer this man's query, please? The data cube that manages system tasks for troubleshooting requires that the multitasking simulation for local variables be put into sleep mode, so data transmission on active nodules can be bundled according to the, the source data. Obviously. So I'm afraid that is the situation, you see. Did you good people follow all that? Not even slightly. What was all that mumbo jumbo? It is exactly as my programmer explained. I'm guessing I picked the wrong piece of evidence there. Would you like to input another question? Gambling problems. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets. All losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling centre. You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortune is immoral. Immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glenelg. He had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. It's 500! <laughs> that throwback to case one relates to one reason you love this game. AA1 is basically about Edgeworth. It relates to Wright only in his connection to Edgeworth. AA2 is basically about the Faye family. 3 though is about Nick. About his relationship to the law and the ghosts of his past. That's a good way to put it counting. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way. That's cool. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. L's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races. Horse races, was it? He also gambled on my badge. Everyone likes to gamble from time to time. Huh? But be careful. If you're clueless, you could lose everything. Your money, people's trust, etc. Looks like I got that one wrong. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. Yeah, lottery ticket. The lottery, horse racing, he bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Ooh, he's sweating. Maybe bad enough to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps? No! You are right, Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But, if you win, there's no problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he? For half a million dollars. Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? 
It's true that Mr. Earl won half a million dollars in the end, but that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problem was with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. The fake badge. All good people get into trouble sometimes. Huh? Let's ask one of my programmers what they think. Alright, here we go. Excuse me, what do you think? I'm taking a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was expecting really long text. Yes, perhaps I should take a break too. I wish I could take a break from my troubles, but the rest stop was about a mile back. <laughs> Mr. Tiger. Furio Tiger, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender. People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Looks like, like you're one to talk. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. L. You think Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tiger? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't know of any connection between the two of them. Really? Because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew each other. Maya said so. Well, what do you think? I'm not sure. Let's ask one of the programmers. Excuse me, can you answer this man's query, please? The data queue that manages system tasks for troubleshooting requires that the multitasking simulation for local variables was put into sleep mode so that the data transmission on active nodes can be bundled together correctly according to the source code. Obviously. So I'm afraid that is the situation, you see. Did you good people follow all of that? Not even slightly. What was all that mumbo jumbo? It's exactly as my programmer explained. Ripnik. That's terrifying. The idea of his soul shattering if he mixes it up too much. <laughs> Thanks, Shizzle. <laughs> A3 is about how Nick ate glass like it was nothing. <laughs> Gonna drink some water. Each of these locks takes several hits to break, don't they? Time, sweetie. She is asleep. Cat is asleep. She'll wake up soon and realize. She'll realize that she's hungry. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you her soon. She's just on the couch. Connection between the two of them. It is this calendar. Oh god, there's too much! Too much evidence! Glenn's calendar. There's a note saying, meet with the tiger. Furio Tiger, aka the tiger, is the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met with on the day of his murder. And the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! It's true that Glenn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit. About $100,000, I think. $100,000? Ouch. But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of that good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but... He said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents. I suspect he was talking about programming. What, what computer program is worth $100,000? Nick. <laughs> Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to my work. I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question. Was it by any chance? This! 
Gumshoe's lunchbox! This is a very delicate matter. Without the necessary data, there's really no way I can access the information. I know Mr. Elg created some sort of program. She can't deny it if I show her the program itself as evidence. Bum bim 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 Oh, there it is. The virus. Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Bomber. No! Yeah, full health. Glynn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was... in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, $100,000 in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. So, he said he was taking on some extra work. Something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Trebian? Where do you come up with these ideas? Taking a cat nap. Yeah. Weenies are the most powerful programming language. <laughs> so it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius. In a bad sort of way, of course. But still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. Inconceivable. Gumshoe was right for a change. This date, December 3rd, that is marked on his calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. MC Bomber updated. A computer virus made by Glenn Elg. Potentially worth millions of dollars. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. So now he's losing horse racing tickets thrown back on the floor. <laughs> Use the trash can, Nick! <laughs> well then. Oh, nothing more to say? Yeah. Anyway, I guess we're done here. Trebian. Well, he had to show up eventually, didn't he? Hey, bonjour. I have been waiting for you to return. Mr. Armstrong? Ah, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. Ah, it's Zinniop. Who are you calling Zinniop? Ah! I don't have from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. But what? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers. Now. Uh-oh. I think he wants Viola Cadaverini's papers back. Y you mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it. That girl's dumber than an eggplant. You just want to know what's sad. I'll tell you what's sad. And it ain't only her face. She thinks she's got power because she's Bruto's little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court? I'm going to expose what you did to get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. You got that? Two. Uh, oi. Oi, oi. Mr. Armstrong? Forgive me. The Sole, I cannot argue with him. Uh, uh, that really hurt. Is that all you've got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. Well, wait. Don't take it too hard, Phoenix Ride. That was so stupid. I shouldn't have let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital ever.
Dents. Hold it, pal! Yay! D detective Gumshoe? D detective? You think you're gonna stop me, copper? Beat it! Rawr. Whoa! C come on, Gumshoe, keep it together! You guys, get out of here! Leave this guy to me! But, but, go, pal, and take this! If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? Oh. Uh, Alright. Thanks, Gumshoe. Wait, Nick! Don't leave me behind! I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court. Tender Lender is going down. Wow. Yeah, Gumshoe's great. Suddenly a wild Gumshoe appears. <laughs> yeah. Gumshoe's great. Well then. Wow, that was... Wow, we've been going for three hours. Oh my god. Yeah, my throat's getting kind of sore. Anyway, I guess... It still seems a bit early to end the stream, though. But I think we'll leave the rest of this case for tomorrow. Because I'm assuming the court segment will be rather long. So we'll save. And we'll do the court stuff tomorrow. Or... Whenever I stream next, probably tomorrow. Okay, um, I guess I can take a little break and maybe I can play some uh, some Mega Man or something, and give my throat a bit of a rest. Let's see. Yeah, I can play some Mega Man Five. Anyone want to see some Mega Man? All right, I'll take a quick break. Oh, I'm gonna feed the cat. Which cat am I gonna feed? This cat. And that cat. Right there on the couch. I just tried calling her. I turned off the microphone and she just... <laughs> She's out. <laughs> She'll wake up when I feed her. That music's caught, uh, caught in my head. How many times will Phoenix lose vital evidence to the guilty party before learning not to flaunt the evidence? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's the kitchen. The pea is a, uh, it's just an old um, pea plate stuck on the side of the fridge. Oh, hey, sweetie. Are you awake now? She's staring at me. Hey, sweetie. How you doing? You want some food? You look so half asleep. Yeah, all right. We're going to take a break. Yeah, sorry, the cam the cable got caught up. All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll play some Mega Man 5. Well, I'll see you soon. Yeah.